Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. And if no one has said thank you to, to you today, let me be the first one to say it. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the effort you're putting into this. And thank you for all of the time that you spend not only honing your skills as a student and a test taker, but also honing your skills as a PT. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, we do have a practice question here for you today, but before I get to that, just a quick reminder that we have ongoing classes over at ptfinalexam.com. If you're looking for a more robust class, you can track down our VIP program or our P premium program. Both of these are meant to take you through the content of the FSBPT that is likely to show up on the NPTE. Uh, we take you through all that content. It just is a question of how much how much content do you want? If you want the full package, the VIP program is the one for you. If you're looking for the highlight tour across all the systems, you'll find that in the premium. And then if you're looking for just the quick review right before test day, you'll really enjoy our economical crash course. It's a way just to go through those big three systems right before test day. So today we've got a practice question related to the non-systems. So as far as things go, the non-systems represents uh, somewhere around 25% of the test. I mean, it's not or sorry, about 10% of the test or more is related to the non-systems, about 30 questions on non-systems. Today, we'll be talking about specifically equipment, devices, and technologies. So as we go through that, you'll see that that's represented on the test by about five to six questions. And we, we've got a practice question for you here related to that today. All right, so without further ado, I will read to you the practice question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together and get, uh, yeah, get this locked into your head for test day. A patient with moderate Parkinson's disease is receiving gait training by a physical therapist to reduce fall risk. Which of the following assistive devices would be most appropriate for this patient? So a patient with moderate Parkinson's disease is receiving gait training for a physical by a physical therapist to reduce fall risk. Which of the following assistive devices would be most appropriate for this patient? So moderate Parkinson's, par moderate Parkinson's and which assistive device? Number one, four-wheeled walker. Number two, front-wheeled walker. Number three, platform walker. Number four, vertical or trekking poles. So we've got one four-wheeled walker, two front-wheeled walker, three platform walker, and four vertical or trekking poles. All right, so this question talking about Parkinson's disease, someone with moderate Parkinson's disease, they're starting to have some significant disability, forward flexion, kyphosis, festination, uh, not only not not only bradykinesia, but maybe even some akinesia, uh, certainly getting high in the fall risk category. So that paints the picture of someone with moderate Parkinson's disease. So as far as which assistive device would be best for this patient, the correct answer is something that puts them into a more vertical position. So the vertical or trekking poles that holds them into an upright position. Think of this as like a hiking, st two hiking sticks or trekking sticks that they're holding onto. The reason that you do that rather than a walker is because the walker tends to promote increased forward flexion. And that forward flexion would then lead to increased festination, especially with a wheeled device. So wheeled devices are particularly hazardous for these patients as they are likely to increase festination. So therefore, someone with Parkinson's disease, you'll want something that's more stable and something that holds them more upright. So canes and vertical poles or trekking type poles would be your best bet when it comes to assistive devices with someone with Parkinson's disease. That being said, assistive devices are, it's a little bit of a catch-22 with someone with Parkinson's disease simply because they have difficulty initiating movement and especially if there's something they're trying to move at the same time, like a, a cane or a pole, it does become more difficult. And so that being said, a lot of times these folks would benefit from either a single point cane or bilateral trekking poles that could be helpful. Other things to help prevent them from forward flexing or going into more festination would be what we call a negative sole shoe. So a negative sole shoe is one where the toe is lifted higher than the heel. So think about that. It puts the foot into a slightly dorsiflexed position. And by so doing it, almost it, it's almost like it's pushing the patient back into vertical rather than letting them flex forward and, and fall over or be into a go into a festination pattern. So all that to say that vertical poles can be helpful. Uh, wheeled walkers, especially, you know, walkers with wheels, so a four-wheeled or front-wheeled walker, these ones are not ideal because it, it promotes or increases forward flexion and festination. And so it's really kind of a, a question of, all right, what would be the best in this situation? 
And uh, for this moderate Parkinson's disease, you'd want to avoid the the vertical or trekking poles. Platform walkers, those are good for if you can't bear weight through your wrist. And again, we don't have anything listing, listed in the question that would preclude them from bearing weight through their hand and wrist. And so again, leading us to our most correct answer. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we have over on ptfinalexam.com and the NPTE podcast. If you're looking for all of our handy cheat sheets and tips and tricks, check it out over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can stay up to date with all of our current offerings and get all of our freebies over at uh, ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. All right, well, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Keep a grin on your chin. Will Crane fist pumps all around. Thank <laughs> you.